Hi everyone, welcome back to our Minimalism in May playlist. Now this video is around children and minimalism and I've actually made three really helpful videos already for children and minimalism which I will link in the video description box below. However, for this video I wanted to make something different and I wanted to go deeper with this subject of minimalism and talk about including children as part of our journey through minimalism, embracing less in our lives. Now I would love to hear at what age did you start talking to children about minimalism and how have they embraced it? Are they enjoying it? Are they seeing the value of it? Or do they not like it? I would love to hear from you so please share your experience with me by putting a comment in the comment box below. I've been talking to Rocco about minimalism for a really long time explaining to him the calm energy and space that we create in our home by having less stuff in our home. Showing Rocco the difference between quality versus quantity. So today I want to talk to you about minimalism and children and embracing them as part of your own journey so it's a bonding experience together. Now there have been lots of studies of the benefits for minimalism and children. Generally children with less have a greater sense of clarity, a greater sense of imagination, a greater sense of community connection, the environment and gratitude. And these are all really valuable building blocks that help children develop and grow into meaningful, connected and happy, well-rounded adults. Whereas kids that have lots of toys, lots of stuff, lots of clutter around them have also been shown to suffer from cumulative stress reaction. So for this video, I wanted to share with you five personal things that I've been doing as a parent with Rocco to help our love of minimalism continue to flourish so that Rocco can also experience the benefits of this incredibly powerful movement as well. All right, the first thing is communication. Make sure you explain to your kids why you are incorporating minimalism. Make it a really light, easy to understand conversation. Nothing overwhelming or confusing. Go straight to the point. For example, when I say to Rocco that we are not buying something or we're having less stuff in our home, I explain that it means the house is going to be tidier and easier to clean, which then means for him we can spend more time playing together, being outside in the park. He understands directly the benefits and how it flows onto him. So he feels more a part of being a minimalist and wants to embrace it just as much as I do. Number two is dimensions. To make it really easy for a child to understand when there is excess or when the clutter is becoming too much, we have dimensions that show or trigger or signal it's time to deal with things. So for example, Rocco has a toy basket in his bedroom and he knows that when that toy basket is full or overflowing, it is time to go through those toys, decide what he's outgrown, what he doesn't use and what he wants to give away unconditionally to another child. Now, whilst I recommend children who are old enough do their own decluttering so that they feel in control and take ownership of this and actually learn the really valuable skill of decluttering which is a lifelong skill that will serve them for a really long time. I highly recommend guiding them and watching over them. Stopping and taking the time to gently ask them what toys do you enjoy playing with still? What toys do you think you've outgrown? What toys do you think Jimmy or John or Amy would like to play with as well? So they feel really empowered and they understand they're doing a really good thing by letting these toys go. But also they understand that they're growing as well. The third thing is experiences. More experiences, less stuff. Now, the other weekend I had to go to Hong Kong for work. And unfortunately, I couldn't take Rocco with me. Now, on my way home, I had my heart set on buying Rocco a present from Hong Kong, bringing him something back to mask my own guilt for not taking him with me. Now, I finally found a toy shop in the airport, the one and only toy shop, and just as I was about to buy a toy, I caught myself. I'm like, what am I doing? Why am I going and wasting this money on a toy that Rocco doesn't really need or want, when really all he wants is me to come home safely share with him my experiences of what Tom and I got up to in Hong Kong and spend quality time together reconnecting. So as soon as I caught myself, 
I snapped out of it. I put the toy back on the shelf and walked straight out of the shop. So the moment I landed and I got to go and pick Rocco up, we made sure we spent the evening together. We played Beyblades, we had a bath together, we read stories and Rocco was so happy. It made me realize you really don't need to use toys to buy your child's happiness. Just spend time with your children quality time as much as possible. The fourth idea for incorporating minimalism with your children and that is to get creative. Create zero waste art together, zero waste creative activities together. For example, you can take egg cartons and turn them into little herb gardens. You can create your own homemade coffee scrub with coffee granules, brown sugar and coconut oil, something that Rocco and I absolutely love to do together and love to use together. You can go out for a walk together, pick up leaves and twigs and flowers and grass and make your own um, happy men or make your own aquarium or terrarium. There are so many things that you can do together and you're not damaging the environment and it's really easy to dispose of without any damage to the environment. Now, one thing I highly recommend when it comes to all the creative art that kids love to make and Rocco makes a lot of it, and that is when the art is finished and you're ready to let it go, and you're feeling guilty about this, a great idea is to simply take a photograph of that art and save it. Because it means your child is going to remember what they make, but you're also not holding on to the clutter in your home. And the fifth and final tip for including minimalism with your children, and that is to always lead by example. Okay, we're not all perfect, we can't always do the right thing, but we need to show that we're always being conscious, present, and aware of trying to be a better person, a better human on this planet. So always communicate what you are doing and why, the benefits of it, the importance of it. Remember, you want to model it, teach it, correct it, and encourage it. And when the great things happen, always make sure you reward your children, showing that it's fantastic, this way of life, and how much benefits it's gonna bring into their life, both now and well into the future. All right, everyone, I really hope you're enjoying this Minimalism in May playlist series. As mentioned, I'm gonna be continuing on with Minimalism for the rest of the year. So make sure that you are subscribed to my channel, make sure you switch on that notification button or bell, and as I said, I would love to hear from you as to when you started talking to your children about Minimalism and how did they embrace it? How did they accept it? I would love to hear your experiences. All right, everyone, have a great week and I'll see you for Money Monday. Ciao.